Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins resetting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Diary looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. Ha ah, ha ha, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayuri? Uh, uh, I'll go next. Wow, Yuri's fired, all, fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her hands down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. Is it? I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Wow, she, she really rushed. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Diary hops out of her chair and carefully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, ha ah, ha ha. Sorry, I giggled. Hee hee hee. Diary. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're resetting to other people. Imagine you're resetting it to yourself like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Diary begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice has made was made as a perfect match. The poem is aimlessly cheery like Sayuri is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayuri's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sari meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sari finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sari. Hee hee hee, even Kakui liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sari. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where the, the sort of general delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're heading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. Hee hee hee. The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? 
Hmm. Don't make me go before Cap Gooey. Not like it can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Cap Gooey lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Hatsuki. It's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over with. Not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. Because I only chose 20 words for the poem. Or is it 10? Or is it 1? Uh, one of those numbers. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. So I'm not really go as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Well, why are y'all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark sound, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well... Do you ha at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. I can't put on this mask that I, you know, like putting it on. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming, though. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what's it like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. Because mine was just, you know, 13 words. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. Makes me really happy. Ooh. And I like how her hair just whips at uh, Natsuki there. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There is no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayuri and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go? Ready to go, Sayuri? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. Kind of adorable, isn't it? Hee hee hee. Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Kabku, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. Eh. Welcome with Sari once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayuri is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayuri. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayuri fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What, what kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Hee hee hee. Hmm. Well. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. I guess. 
Walk home with Yuri, I will still walk home with Sayori. Well, it seems like from the first two poems that I wrote, it seems like it's it's pointing towards yeah, Sayori. Mm, yeah. Okay, let's just go with Sayori. Even though Yuri's nice. Sayori. You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? Yeah? But, but, so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already said, see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Cap Gooey. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if, she's wanted, if she wanted it, so. Sorry, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. Wow. What a mood killer, Cap Gooey. You. You have a weird thing for Sari to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. And again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen that time? I know, right? Who knows what will happen? Huh. I'm gonna end the episode here, everybody. We will make our poem in the next episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys did, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you, everybody, for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!